This is a story of a two month old male child uh, who lived in a village, Kherana, in Raibareli district of Uttar Pradesh, India, with his parents. Grandmother, four sisters. According to the mother, the child developed cough and low grade fever. Parents thought that sickness was seasonal and hence did nothing. On the third day, the child's temperature increased and he refused to feed. The parents thought this was due to evil eye. As a result, they went to a traditional healer to ward off the evil eye. Next day, the mother noticed that the breathing rate of the child had increased. Then the father took the child to a private hospital because he believed that doctors in private hospitals charged more as compared to government hospitals and perhaps were more competent. Those doctors told the father that the child has not had nose problem, resulting in breathing difficulty, gave him medicines and sent him home. That evening, the temperature of the child came out a little, but breathing difficulty increased and at night he deteriorated. He stopped crying. All that private hospitals had closed and therefore he took the child to a primary health center, a government hospital. They gave the child some intravenous medications and with that next morning referred the child to our hospital in Lucknow, which is 120 kilometers away from their residence. It took eight hours for the parents to finally come here and the child was diagnosed as a case of severe pneumonia, admitted in intensive care for almost a week, but was cured and discharged. Not all such children are lucky. And in this slide, you see three stories of such children. Some were saved, but a couple lost their lives. Today, I will be talking about community acquired pneumonia. And in the next slide, you will see that there are about 0.3 episodes per child year of community acquired pneumonia. Childhood pneumonia is the leading cause of death in children under five years of age, taking lives of more than 100 children each hour, nearly a million per year. It disproportionately affects those living in poorest households and in poorest countries around the world. Pneumonia is responsible for almost 16% of deaths in children under five years of age in India. Since I work in India, I will be largely talking about my experiences here. Next slide. First, we should understand what are the symptoms of pneumonia? In children, it is fast breathing with or without fever and cough. World Health Organization has standardized breathing rate cutoffs by age. For children below two months, fast breathing is 60 or more breaths per minute. Two to 11 months, 50 or more. 12 to 59 months, 40 or more. A child with fast breathing alone is a case of pneumonia. She may or may not have severe lower chest in drawing. However, when such a child has lethargy, becomes unconscious, is unable to feed, vomits everything, has convulsions, or has severe acute malnutrition, then she is a case of severe pneumonia. Pneumonia can be treated with antibiotics at home. Next slide. But a child with severe pneumonia requires hospitalization as there is often need to administer oxygen, give intravenous fluids and antibiotics and monitor for improvement and for occurrence of complications. The next slide shows hospital management of a case of severe pneumonia taken from a recent publication in the BMJ. Here you would see 
that if the pneumonia is mild, it can be managed at home or at the parenteal center. If it is moderate or severe pneumonia, we need to refer the child to secondary healthcare facility for further assessment. If it's a complicated pneumonia and there are multiple risk factors, we have to send the child far away, maybe to a tertiary center in an ambulance, or if there is no ambulance, the parents rush with such a child. Now, among children who get lung infection, majority, 90% have pneumonia, and few, 10% have severe pneumonia. Most of deaths occur in cases of severe pneumonia. There is about one to 5% case fatality rate for severe pneumonia in hospital setup. As untreated pneumonia progresses, most of them end up as severe pneumonia. Now we should understand in the next slide, why is there high mortality due to pneumonia? Fast breathing pneumonia is often not recognized by parents until the child becomes sicker with development of danger signs and severe chest and drawing. We conducted a study in rural and tribal areas of Hindi-speaking most backward districts in the states of Uttar Pradesh and Bihar in India. We found that even though the parents know about pneumonia as a disease of lung, yet they did not know about the symptoms for recognizing it. Neither the parents nor the community health workers in public health sector removed the clothing of a child to count respiratory rate and look for chest in drawing. Hence, there was delayed recognition. In India, there are a wide variety of care providers, qualified as well as unqualified. Qualified doctors are in the public health sector in rural areas or practice in peri-urban or urban areas in their own private clinics. Unqualified healthcare providers are based in villages, have no formal training, but have learned to use modern medicine by reading and copying prescriptions of qualified doctors or by working as their clinic assistants. Then there are healthcare providers in homeopathy and other traditional methods of medicine and they're not qualified to take, use modern medicines. So once the symptoms of pneumonia become serious, the child stops feeding or has convulsions, these caregivers take their children to unqualified providers or traditional healers or providers trained in other systems of medicine or simply give them homemade remedies. These usually do not work. So there is a delay in the second step, which is qualified care seeking. By this time, the child has become very sick and then they rush to a qualified practitioner in the city. There has been a transition to two to three providers out of pocket expenditure in excess of family income. Some families become impoverished and sometimes even with taking loans and losing land, they end up losing their child. So in the next slide, we will show you that based on our ethnographic research, we developed messages as posters, audio messages and video messages. We also developed stories in print and video media to show what happens when there is delay in qualified care seeking. You can see in the first poster, we show a child who is coughing. Then this child has severe chest in drawing. Then this child becomes listless. And then there is a bad outcome. And we're trying to tell the parents in the next slide that immediately seek treatment, understand the beginning of pneumonia symptoms, and please, you can save a child. So look, understand, 
and do affirmative action to save your child. And in the third poster, this is a mother who is telling that her child had pneumonia. She took immediate health care and she took an ambulance, went to a tertiary care center and saved her child. Now, to empower community, we have partnered with the government and these messages are displayed in government health facilities in every village in Lucknow district. So almost 1,000 plus villages and more than 1.5 million population have been covered. Community health workers working with the government are also using this to train the caregivers during their village contact session with the mother. We have strengthened supply chain by retraining the government health care providers about pneumonia and providing them with packed pneumonia drug kits that have recommended antibiotics in appropriate dosage as recommended by UNICEF. So now in Lucknow district of Uttar Pradesh, there is community awareness about pneumonia, improved care seeking behavior, and the parents are getting better health care. All these will help in reducing pneumonia specific mortality here. In the next slide, I have shown you that we have developed a website, fightpneumonia.org. All the material developed by us is available here. We hope that our efforts will be replicated all over the country in India and in other countries too. If someone does contact us with queries, we respond to them and assist them to the best of our capacity. It is equally important in the next slide I'm showing you to prevent pneumonia by ensuring exclusive breastfeeding for six months and appropriate complementary feeding to ensure good nutrition. Each child must receive complete age-appropriate immunization. Last year, Indian government has also introduced conjugate pneumococcal vaccine in its immunization program. Vaccination against haemophilus influenza was already being given free of cost. Since streptococcus pneumoniae and haemophilus influenza are commonest bacteria causing pneumonia in children, with effective coverage with these vaccines, the incidence of pneumonia and pneumonia-related mortality will be reduced in our country. Next, it is important to ensure hygiene at the family level and reduce ambient air pollution by using safe cooking fuels, safe automobile fuels, avoid burning of trash and leaves in the open, and avoid exposing children to secondhand smoke. And of course, to avoid smoking, parents should do that. So our fight against pneumonia continues. We are one of the many players in this fight. Each one can join in this effort and contribute in their own way. In this advocacy talk today, I hope I have conveyed the ways in which each one of you can join our fight against pneumonia. Thank you for your time and for listening to me.